So, um, first of all, thanks to Dave and the uh, Institute of, of Measurement and Control for inviting HTS, uh, myself and, and Lee Eccleston today to give you a uh, just a overview and a rundown of developments uh, in the recording of ATEX inspections. Um, I myself, uh, with a colleague of mine, look after the HCS compliance department, um, and we're very busy at the moment. And of course, under that comes um, the ATEX uh, inspections uh, module of the business. And I have with me today uh, my colleague, our IT manager, Lee Eccleston. Um, and uh, Lee's going to uh, back me up today uh, with this with this presentation. Lee is a lot more more technical than I am uh, with regards to to software. So Lee, if you just want to quickly introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm obviously Mark's introduced me as a job title, so I just need to support Mark today um, with this presentation. Okay, so basically, Lee hasn't told you, but Lee's going to keep me on the straight and narrow. I. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a professional uh, present presenter, so to speak, so you'll have to bear with me. And uh, sometimes I have the, uh, <laughs> I tend to get on a little bit and run a, run, run a, run a miss, but uh, Lee's going to keep me on the street and narrow, straight and narrow today, aren't you, Lee? Oh, yes. Yeah. Right, okay. So if everybody's ready, um, today really is about why, um, you know, we would go from a, a paperwork system of recording ATEX inspections um, to a software um, system, whether it be a standalone software system for your site or, or whether it be a cloud-based system. Um, so we'll get into the presentation. So the first slide, of course, as you can all see, is, is the paper versus software. So historically, uh, there's been two options uh, when choosing an ATEX inspection uh, management system. Uh, you have the paperwork system, which of course there are many sites that are still using paperwork system and still caught with that very, very well, um, versus a software system. And uh, we do see more and more uh, sites now moving over to, to software for the inspections. Uh, this presentation will explore why and how we have evolved, we as HTS have evolved, from a paper-based inspection management system um, and to developing uh, a cloud-based uh, solution that, that we actually utilize and use. Um, it will discuss the disadvantages of a paper-based system and the hurdles that uh, we ourselves uh, have overcome to create uh, rules which we consider a new way of working. So, so that's that in, in kind of nutshell. So, uh, just moving on from that, one time, uh, of course, in a simpler world, a paper system was actually fit for purpose. And as mentioned, you know, there are still a lot of sites in the UK that, that still use that system. Um, with the increase of globalisation uh, and the very recent issues, you know, increased uh, remote working, really, as a lot of us working from home. Um, and, and the paperwork system has, you know, fast become a kind of a problem, problematic uh, issue. Um, so the process itself uh, is difficult to manage. Um, it requires kind of an overview to orchestrate the data, you know, the, the actual collection of the data um, by hand, of course. Uh, it requires uh, strict collective data uh, a discipline um, and, and, you know, to actually provide an acceptable level of uh, what we would say uh, data quality, uh, you know, for your site. Um, you know, with regards to uh, actions and, and KPIs, uh, it's very important. Um, with paperweight system, it's difficult and time consuming to review and, of course, implement them quickly. Uh, you would have to go through, well, many sheets of paper to raise actions and faults. Uh, KPIs, they're almost impossible to track uh, by the use of a, of a paper system. Um, very, very difficult. Um, collaboration uh, as well as communication. Uh, when you work with a paper document, uh, collaboration obviously uh, it's commonly known is it's just extremely difficult. Um, if several people uh, need to access uh, the documents, such as you know, like an ATEX inspection, for instance, and of course the reports, um, they either must 
have multiple copies, um, you know, printed out for them. Um, otherwise, they would have, you know, they, they would not have access to any of the documents. So, so that's basically, uh, you know, explains why why that's the case. Um, whereas with digital documents uh, and the management systems that, that come with that, uh, this allows users to actually collaborate in a way that's uh, that's very very easy and actually very very quick. Um, this can also track uh, the changes that are made. Um, obviously, along with that, with the paperwork system, uh, very, very obviously, one of the biggest drawbacks uh, to a paper-based document management system is, is the actual associated costs with that. So, you know, you're looking at uh, additional large amounts of paper, um, environmentally very friendly, we all can appreciate. Um, from a from a company uh, profile point of view, um, you will need more more printers, more machinery, uh, more photocopiers, you know, stationery, and obviously other office supplies such as ink, toners, that kind of thing. So it, it kind of all adds. Uh, it's quite high cost to a company, um, and, and obviously these costs uh, costs add up. Uh, become uh, if it's a medium large business. Uh, you know the the expense can be quite considerable um, to say the least uh, if you want to make changes uh, to a paper in uh, especially an atex inspection you'll have, you know you will have to write all the content again um, and and this is especially apparent we found when our inspectors were out on site using paper previously with uh, a flip board, for instance, and we're on site outdoors, say something like a, um, a bung, a tank bung, um, or a tank farm. You know, the weather's bad, it's cold. There is room for mistakes from the uh, from the technician. And, and it's just, it, it just happens that um, it, it's quite difficult to do inspections like that. So, um, you know, you'll need to write the content again if a mistake's been made. Um, this will need to be repeated every time you want to make more um, corrections. And of course, inspectors are only human. Uh, we can all make mistakes. Uh, and, and that's just the, the way of life, unfortunately, on a, on a hazard area site, shall we say. So when it comes to traceability, um, and of course, the, you know, the recording uh, management, for example, again, with ASX inspections, um, you, can, you can have your drawings uh, kept in in a drawing department or, or with uh, ECNI technicians and then obviously you can have uh, other data and asset uh, documents with uh, you know the you know the certifications for instance the tech certifications and documents they can actually be with the maintenance department um, and then the final, you know, the, the, the ATEX reports, uh, either the fault reports or the full reports and inspections, they can actually be with uh, the site management. So you have a situation where you could potentially have all the relevant documentation for the particular asset to be inspected. It could be spread all over the site. And, and for that, it's kind of, it, well, it's very inefficient and difficult for especially inspectors when they are, are due to do the inspection. They need all that information to be able to carry out the inspection. And of course, if they have to waste time uh, going hunting that that, uh, that data, it's time consuming and cost, not, not very cost effective. Um, also, manual documents uh, and a paper-based paper system, uh, they can be easily damaged, as we know. Uh, they, can, they can be lost, they can be misplaced. Um, they can be stolen. Um, also, on a site, if there are, you know, your documentation is kept with on a site, uh, there's, <laughs> we all don't wish it, but there could be a fire. Um, there, there are natural disasters that can happen, uh, floods, that type of thing. And uh, of course, once those things happen, uh, the potential for your know, loss of data is huge. Um, so, uh, you know, if you don't have any copies uh, on files, sorry, if you don't have the copies of files on site, once they're gone, they're actually gone. Uh, and that information, um, very difficult to retrieve. Storage space is another, um, is another big thing, really. You know, the footprint. 
Uh, quite simply, paper documents can take up significant amount of uh, of space, physical space, and the you know the quantity of, of, of paper normally within a within a, an office environment will increase day by day. Um, you'll need lots of space to store all this uh, this data and information, and uh, maybe you only need that data once a year or once every six months. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, looking at it from that point of view, uh, it's not um, it's, it's not efficient. Uh, that's just in our opinion, of course. Uh, security is uh, another big big one that we considered at HTS. Uh, regardless of the size of a company, uh, for an organisation, it's important to protect all your data uh, and other valuable assets, especially when it comes to ATEX, because obviously the ATEX. Um, you know, you have HSE visits, we all have them. Uh, that, that data has to be protected and presented in a, in a professional and orderly manner. So security is a big issue. Uh, one of the biggest information risks uh, are for a business is paper, uh, because printed documents can be easily lost. Again, like we've mentioned, mishandled or damaged. Uh, whereas with a digital system, whether it be uh, a digital standalone, on your site system uh, in-house or whether it be on the cloud um, it, it can be stored more securely and of course it can be backed up um, so that so that basically sums up uh, how how we feel about uh, how white paper is problematic and why we feel that in the future uh, a software solution is more beneficial. It certainly has been to HTS as a company. Um, so, so yeah, that, that kind of sums it up. So obviously, if you have any questions, write those down. We'll address those at the end of the presentation. So <coughs> for now, we'll move on. Um, so how do we overcome the problems <coughs> that we've that we've experienced? Um, so you can overcome these problems by implementing uh, an ATEX inspection software to actually suit your site and your business. Now, there are many, many out there. There are market leaders, and we'll mention those later on in the presentation. And in our experience, they're all really, you know, fantastic products. Um, they all basically do, do the same thing. They cover the same areas. Um, and the very professional companies that, that do them. Uh, and obviously you'll need to uh, do your own research and look in the marketplace to, to a specific one that suits your business. Um, you know, whether it be a, st a software standalone version or whether it be a cloud cloud uh, cloud-based version. Um, but again, we'll mention, uh, you know, the market leaders that, that we know about. Um, you guys might know other ones. Um, and, and, you know, that will be down to, to yourselves to choose if you so wish uh, to go forward with getting rid of the paper. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can overcome the problems by implementing a specific uh, ATEX inspection software to suit your business. Um, but, but one thing, there's a few things you've got to consider before obviously moving down that road. Um, so the setup time of software and cloud-based systems and solutions initially can be uh, quite time consuming. Um, the reason for that is obviously you have all your ATEX assets on a site, so you might have uh, 200, say, for instance, ATEX assets on a site. Those assets have to be, along with all the data for the assets, they have to be uploaded, obviously, initially into the system, into the software, um, along with the certifications, the drawings, you know, all associated data has to be uploaded. Now, the good thing is, and the positive thing is, well, once it's uploaded, then it's a huge time saving going forward. I mean, we found it at HTS. It's been it's been a godsend for us. Um, but that, you, you know, you have to be aware that initially it might take some time. Uh, the other thing is as well that what you've got to bear in mind is with an asset, if you if you have uh, the same asset many times on a on a site, um, certainly the, the, the software we're using, you, uh, you only have to upload that data once uh, as it can be reused in like a, like a type version. Um, so, so again, that's something to bear in mind. Uh, another uh, potential stumbling block may be uh, if you have an existing fault code policy 
Um, will it be adaptable? You know, your site code uh, policy, will it be adaptable with uh, the particular uh, software solutions you're looking at? Um, there are many ways around that, but then it's, it's just something to bear in mind uh, when choosing um, uh, a solution going forward. Uh, this may depend, uh, well, another thing to consider obviously with with more this is more for a cloud-based solution is your company policy when it comes to um where you store your data so obviously with cloud cloud-based it won't be your company that will store the data it will be obviously uh, another company a specialist uh, company with their external servers so that's something to think of when if, if you're going down the, the cloud-based uh, solution so so that's what things we need to overcome. Uh, moving forward quite quickly, this was what we looked at um, for, for our business on key features that we actually focused on uh, to enable us to move forward. And following requests from, a cli from our clients, the key features we focused on to develop inspection management software uh, basically were these. Um, Necessity is mother of invention, uh, so they say. We developed a system to overcome issues that, that we were actually having. Um, and these are the key things we were looking at. So cloud-based uh, was one particular thing that actually suited our business, just for the fact that we operate on, on many UK sites. Um, moving with the times allows the system much more flexibility uh, than traditional software for us. Uh, again, that's not a, a negative. Uh, you know, it can be a positive cloud or or standalone software. It depends on your business model. Uh, how, to, how to correctly actually uh, store asset data um, and how best to use the information. That's another key um, issue for us. Uh, in, you know, checks and approvals. We needed that to be to be built in there. Um, also, making sure that the competency of of inspectors that were carrying out inspe inspections was at the the correct level and uh, the competency was visible to us uh, that was also a, a obviously important um, helping determine whether inspectors and other uh, users have the correct competency within the system how to carry out inspections uh, self-explanatory uh, manage, managing, like I said, managing multiple sites and how them sites are actually broken down uh, within the software. How to manage and raise faults, uh, extremely important, you know, raising faults, implementing the site fault codes uh, so you can have uh, a structure of urgency in uh, remedying them, 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 those, those faults that have occurred. Uh, and obviously to track your uh, companies. Uh, KPIs uh, with respect to the inspections. Um, developing a robust and easy reporting system. Um, <laughs> nobody likes to use the, the paper reporting system. It's time consuming. It's sometimes not accurate. Uh, so we were looking obviously to develop a robust system uh, within the software to so that we could quite easily access and uh, put together and compile reports. Um, there are multiple uh, like I've, I've also mentioned, there are multiple high quality, very high quality ATEX inspection softwares out in the marketplace. They are available there. Um, and of course, you know, uh, if you need to look at this type of thing, then uh, you, you need to obviously have a look at what, what is the be best fit for you, for you and your site and, and the way you perform uh, your uh, ATEX inspections. So, okay. Uh, moving on from that, uh, there are different ways, obviously, of implementing uh, an ATEX inspection management tool. Uh, we obviously we chose a, a cloud-based system, uh, as it makes completely cross-platform, you know, uh, access meaning all all needs to access everybody and use a system. That's uh, so all you need is a web browser, um, and it can also allow you for development onto uh, mobile devices. Uh, our guys use tablets out there in, uh, on, on, on the sites to inspect. Uh, data is live. Uh, it's always up to date. So that obviously allows your managers 
uh, and your management team to, to quickly see the status of inspections on the site and also see them as they happen. Um, of course, we're in a we're in a situation at the moment where a lot of us are remotely working from home. Um, a lot of us have different opinions on that. You know, we, we're going through this uh, this COVID pandemic at the moment. So, uh, you know, in the current climate, more and more people need to need to be more flexible uh, working remotely. So that was a huge consideration. Uh, Cloud-based solution that gives you that 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 flexibility, and it also gives you the ability to manage multiple sites. Um, from the comfort of your your home office, shall we say? Uh, collabor sorry, collaboration. Um, <clears throat> it's greatly improved with a cloud-based solution, as multiple users uh, can be carrying out different tasks throughout the system uh, at any one time, and of course, working collaboratively. So, paper-based system. Um, only one copy can be used at one time. Uh, team members can view and share information easily. Uh, also, very securely across uh, a software platform. Uh, data uh, stored in the cloud is it's constantly uh, updated and backed up. Uh, so, of course, if you're uh, a medium to large company, you have an IT department, uh, it's obviously one last, last uh, large task for your IT, IT department to do. I'm sure there are more important issues for the IT department. Um, okay. Uh, so, a case of software-based asset management system uh, di displays obviously in real time and also displays as data evolves. Uh, so, when data is stored on a piece of paper, uh, there's no real way of updating it or retrieving the information quickly. Uh, so, you know that that could be an issue. Um, by using sophisticated databases, asset management tools, uh, data can be inputted quite quickly you know into the system and referenced as many times as you need to so for instance uh, if you have multiple uh, items uh, the same items on a site you would only need to input it once into the software and then you can reference it uh, as many times as you like uh, when it comes to ATEX inspections uh, when they're actually due uh, to be carried out it's important uh, for an inspector to locate the asset data. So, as previously mentioned, you know, the data can be in, in several locations across the site. Uh, you know, loop drawings, asset certifications. Uh, this data can actually, with, with with software, can be stored all in one area and tagged to the asset. So, when you go into the asset, it can be all visible, all seen, all downloadable from that one area. Um, which, of course, saves a huge amount of time. It's a heck of a lot more efficient and um, and, and it's easy. Uh, obviously, that's providing all the data is uploaded correctly in the first place and that you have all that data. Um, so, uh, so, so yeah, that's 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 that. It saves it saves time. Um, asset location. Can be uh, can be found quite quickly as well. We do find that you know sometimes our inspectors arrive on site and they get all the paperwork and that's great, that's fantastic. But then, where's the asset? You know they might spend half an hour trying to find where the asset is that they need to inspect. So again, that information can be very visible quickly within the software. So you know by an area or you can add a photo of what the what the what the product is and where the area is um, so again this this can all be built in um, uh, using the information from the asset database combined with inspection data stroke fault raised as well uh, you can get kind of like a trend in fault uh, specific to an asset um, so for instance you can view your assets uh, and see uh, for instance, I would say a uh, cable gland uh, cracking, you know, something as simple as that. Uh, and you can might be able to see that many times uh, across uh, your inspections, therefore giving you the visibility to say, you know, potentially have we got a problem there? Are they being fitted incorrectly? Are they being over tightened? So, you know, that's that's an added, uh, you know, like an added bonus there. And it also comes into the, you know, pro proactive maintenance. You can do something about that. Uh, to stop it happening further down the line. Um, 
you can you can also see uh, how long the, the equipment has been installed um, and whether it probably will need replacing, uh, you know, the equipment lifespan. Uh, that will also be, be there. Um, has data actually gone through uh, the checks and approvals uh, and, you know, to make sure that the, the data in the system is actually correct? And Do you want to uh, flick to ATEX's back there, Mark? Yeah, we can do so. Thanks for the reminder, Lee. I will just jump over to. So, uh, as we mentioned previously, uh, we use uh, uh, a cloud based software. And just for, for practice uh, purposes, we're going to show you uh, about what, what we previously discussed there. Uh, so, for instance, uh, which is the best one to start with, Lee? Uh, well, you just the, the the element management system. Okay. So first of all, then we'll show you uh, briefly um, <clears throat> your assets on site. So you can see that we have several sites, and this is the site asset list. Uh, and of course, we can pick one of these uh, site assets and have a look at. So I think everybody knows what a Hawk PL612 junction boxes are very popular in the ATEX marketplace, especially on sites. And of course, on this, you can see once the asset is actually loaded to the system, uh, you'll have the full description. Um, you'll have uh, obviously who's done some, some inspections previously to it, who's approved it, who's it been checked by. Uh, you can pull off the reports. Um, you'll have all the data, the correct data there. Um, you've got the ability to load up the photograph of the product. Uh, you can also see where the uh, that particular asset is duplicated on the site and also some fault history. Uh, it's all there. Um, also mentioned previously, you have the ability to uh, upload to that particular asset the data. So, for instance, the important money, you know, the the uh, product ATEX certification, uh, an installation manual for, for instance. Um, uh, and just, just to give you an example there, there's the ATEX certificate for that particular product, uh, all there in one place. So, so basically that just gives you the, um, the overview of, of that. Oh, let's move back, okay. So, uh, moving on so quite swiftly, so uh, tracking competency, as previously mentioned, uh, why do we need inspectors and managers uh, competency? Well, in a shell, you need things to be done absolutely as, as right as possible uh, and correctly with ATEX. And of course, we all uh, experience HSE inspectors on site. And of course, it's really good for them to have access quickly. Uh, of, of course, site managers also will want access quickly to who is actually doing the inspections and more importantly, what's their competency level. Um, user profiles, they can be actually uploaded to the, the software. Uh, along with the user profiles, you can upload their their photo, their competency, the complex card. Um, obviously, you'll see them from that when their expiry date is on their comp uh, complex card is. You can upload their uh, any qualifications they have, um, and also for the user, you can assign a competency level. So you can have novices, experts, principals. Uh, so that then you can keep um, you can keep your actual uh, software secure and make sure that the right people are doing the right uh, right processes. Um, like I mentioned, certain certificates can be uploaded, and we'll just again revert back. So uh, here at the top, you have account management, and we can go into the competency record. Now, of course, this is just for demonstration purposes for you guys. Uh, there's some of us guys on here. Uh, you can see the names. You can see the competency level. These can be edited, obviously. For instance, when a novice actually gets is, uh, more experienced and, and uh, he can be upgraded. Uh, we can go into myself, for instance. Obviously, I'm not Compex approved and uh, I'm, I'm kind of an account manager, so uh, that's the details that will appear against myself on the system. I have a photo of myself uh, helping out on site. Um, 
obviously not uh, doing inspections. But uh, yeah, you can have my details there. And of course, if I was complex, you can. This is where you could upload all the uh, information about uh, your in, your inspector. So, so that kind of tells uh, a brief over, overview overlay of that. Uh, again, moving on. So, uh, whichever system you go with or you choose, uh, it should have. Uh, a, a predetermined ATEX inspection uh, form uh, and it will that form will be based on uh, the ATEX standard BSEN 6007-9-17. Uh, this pulls relevant data from uh, the asset database to the correct inspection uh, to be used on a specific piece of equipment. So if it's EXE uh, then it automatically picks up the EXE form um, from the asset data. Um, that's quite it's quite quite simply that that's what you'll see in in all these software um, custom fault codes uh, these can be um, <clears throat> uploaded into the system so you might have a specific uh, uh, site site fault code system uh, that can obviously be uploaded these these can change between different sites and companies uh, these inspection forms should populate the fault code actually within that form. Um, so it'll all be predetermined for you. You just choose uh, which code um, is, is referring to that, that particular fault of asset. Um, once the inspections have been completed and saved, that will automatically raise the fault if there's a fault with the asset. Uh, it will automatically raise the fault once the document is saved and completed and uh, the data to the tag itself and also through throughout the whole um, system. So when using cloud-based software, the data is live, it's updated in real time, it gives the managers uh, an always up-to-date overview of the site. Uh, with advantages, uh, sorry, with advancements in mobile technology, um, you can actually use now uh, ASX rated uh, mobile devices. We use some tablets to do carry out hours on, on quite a few sites and uh, they, they use the carry out inspections. So as soon as they they do the inspection, they've got the tablet there at the asset and uh, you know they're checking going through whether it's a fault. Once you save that document, and that is that's immediately visible um, to the management uh, team that are actually on the, the desktop. So so we can have a look, quick look at that, how that, sorry, I don't know what I've done here, let me just go back. Okay, <laughs> you can tell I'm a little bit of a novice at this. Uh, so, so yeah, when we go to, uh, uh, what were we doing, the forms, okay, so we're going to the tag home. And again, you can see all your, your tags listed here. So again, we'll pick a, uh, a junction box. Um, and as you can see here, we've got the D for detailed, uh, C is close, V is visual. So it's quite simple. The inspector will click on the D. This will be on his tablet and he can go through. And if he finds a fault, he can go through all this. This is the detail form, obviously. And you can go through pass or fail. Uh, the fault code for that fail. So that'll all be predetermined there. And of course, a comment on the the actual fault itself. Uh, what is the fault? And of course, when he's finished his, his just just, re just uh, go to the top again, Mark. Yeah, no problem, Lee. So um, keep going. So you can also see there the tag details. If you click where it says tag details to the right. Uh, yeah, here, yeah. If you click that. That gives you a bit more information about the actual tag itself. If you close that, and you've got the fault history. Yeah. There's no, no faults on that one. Yeah, uh, and then also the element data, the element uh, data. which is like all the ATEX um, information that you may need to, to carry out the inspection. Yeah, so that's all there for accessible for the actual inspector when he's actually there uh, with the asset. And obviously, once he's completed that inspection, he will save. Uh, he'll save that, and that'll be saved in real time, and uh, that will be raised as a fault that particular one and that that will then be seen uh, immediately uh, so yeah i mean uh, when using the cloud-based system uh, the data is live and it's updated in real time 
obviously again that gives managers uh, an always up to date uh, overview of the site so so yeah i mean that's kind of that in in in, uh, in a nutshell uh, moving on now you've got you know a site overview so uh you've just seen obviously there the, the dashboard of the, the particular software we use uh, we're able to see where all our sites uh where we carry out inspections we're able to see where all those sites are in the uk and we can access them access them immediately from that that first page all that data is is actually live on that site um so you know we can actually track and see how many uh faults how many assets are in fault immediately and how many are in good um which is a really good quick quick reference also on those sites we we kind of have a a uh, hierarchy uh, top down so you can click into the site and then you have your plant so if you have two plants within that site you can put the two plants there and then with each plant you can have uh, areas you might have one area you might have four areas and then the assets will go into those actual areas so you can actually track the assets to exactly what area uh, it's located again goes back to the previous comments that it's essential that uh, those assets are quickly located where they are um do you want to show that yeah i can i can actually show that so we go to the dashboard uh, on this particular version with the, there's a map and obviously you can see worldwide where your sites are um, and then obviously it's broken down. I mean, you know, this is for demo, so we have HTS Chemical, we have HTS Europe, but you can see, for example, there's nine assets that are good on that site and there's one in fault. And you can also see what fault that is. Is it uh, uh, that particular one is a fault called two? So that would be quite urgent to, uh, to uh, rectify. Um, and again, you know, you can see it's the same with, with all those. Do you um, click, into, click into one of them? Uh, yeah, no problem, HTS Gas. So then you, yeah, you can go into gas. Under this, it will tell you the uh, plants and the projects. So on this particular one, they're listed as uh, blue zone, green zone, red zone. Uh, and then obviously you click into one of these plants and then you've got your areas. So there's obviously in tank six, there's, there's just one asset in there that's actually good. And in tank five, there are uh, six good and two in fault that need uh, need rectifying so, uh, so so that's actually where uh, the hierarchy comes in uh have i covered that lee is that okay yeah yeah perfect. yeah okay so we'll go back to okay so we're not too far off now guys so uh, i can just bear with us a little bit uh fault management kpis so uh, immediate access and visibility of assets faults and live data it's extremely important. So data is live. Faults are raised from inspections and can be instantly uploaded to a cloud or software based solution uh, that gives managers instantaneous access to faults raised and can quickly be issued remedial work uh, for that for that particular problem and fault. Um, fault code systems can be set up as per sites, uh, as per your site policy and uh, fixed in and, and fixed in a place in the software to keep the whole system compliant uh, to, to your site policies. Uh, it can be used to track KPI. Uh, this can range from how efficient your inspectors are, how reliable the equipment is. This can be done by tracking how many inspectors are, you know, how many inspections are kept being carried out, um, and also what are common faults within the, within the assets. Uh, of course, accountability, uh, you can see all the way through the process uh, from start to finish, who's been doing what, uh, from uh, who's carried out the inspections to who's closed out the inspections. Um, uh, on all the uh, existing faults can be can be actually tracked. So uh, from an overview point of view, KPI, you know, you can look at actually the performance, how well your site's performing. Um, so do you want me to go into a tax inspect for that one? Lee? You can you can move on to that one. Yeah, no problem. So uh okay. Easy all in one. Um documents and 
record access, physically stored documents, as we all know, uh, are time consuming and difficult to access on sites that have multiple departments. Ease of management. So especially when the number of people involved in a process increases, uh, the data collection, review and discipline uh, is vastly improved from a software point of view rather than a paperwork um, system. And of course, it's, it's just a fact of life that, uh, that that people make mistakes. You know, they can sometimes be sloppy. Um, mistakes can be made. It's, you know, like I say, these things happen. Maybe an inspector has filled in um, a field uh, on the paper incorrectly. It's a spelling mistake, an error, or the serial number is missing a couple of numbers. These things can happen. It's less likely in a software system, especially where you've got predetermined uh, fields um, already in the software built in. Uh, and then, of course, when you're looking at data, uh, if data stored inside uh, kind of dispersed emails or on PDFs, uh, we would actually class that as dead data because there's no actual way of, of exploiting that, that data to report on or to analyze. Um, so, you know, especially for KPIs, uh, so it's not possible to do that with, or it's very difficult with the paperwork system. Um, tracing through, you know, throughout the full process, especially Vertex inspections, um, it can be easily done using software-based systems. Uh, that's just that's just uh, the fact that we found. Uh, with everyone accessing the same information, you can maintain a consistency uh, in the data that's produced. You can avoid uh, human error or hugely decreased human error and have a clear record of any revisions that are made and, of course, updates along, alongside that. So all, all beneficial. And of course, just to uh, just to cap, um, you know, you can instantly access serious fault data uh, as soon as the inspections have been carried out. And obviously, that is extremely important with access because that could prevent serious site incidents. Um, and and this is this is another big thing why we have gone forward down this route. Reporting that can be uh, produced in seconds, as we've demonstrated. Uh, you can quickly summarise full site information. Again, you've seen a brief overview of that. And uh, to top it off, it saves uh, saves time compiling reports. So, uh, so yeah, that that that's basically uh, what we wanted to to put across to you guys today. And and finally, we did promise. These are what we see the the market leaders in there. That, and of course, there will be many more. And um, please do. Uh, go out there and and look at this type of software because they're all very similar. They're all excellent and they all do a terrific job of of managing your uh, your ATEX site assets. Um, and and basically, yeah, uh, just choose one that, that best suits your site and uh, the way that you want to carry a continuing future with your with your asset management, especially in hazardous areas. So so that's me today and. Uh, Thanks, thanks for all your attention. Um, hope I didn't bore you too much. And of course, now we can Lee will back me up with the uh, answers and questions if you have any. So thanks very much once again.